In the introduction to last week's episode, I said that the secret to having unshakable self-confidence lies in two things. The first one is self-acceptance. Full and unconditional acceptance of yourself. And we looked at that last week. If you haven't yet listened to it, take some time to do so. You'll be glad you did. Now, the other thing that will help you to develop an unshakable self-confidence is having a compelling future and taking steps to attain it. And that's what we are going to be exploring today. I will be sharing with you why it is important for you to have a compelling future and how you can go about achieving your goals in record time without stressing yourself out. It is going to be a slightly longer episode than my usual episodes, but it will be worth all the time you spend listening and learning from it. So, sit back, relax, grab a pen and paper, and let's get started. I am Sterling Libs. Welcome to Emboldened, the podcast. I believe that one of the most valuable gifts you can give yourself is that of being true to yourself. Being authentically you and living your life the best way you can without pretending to be someone else or trying to please everybody in order to fit in or be accepted by others. Your journey to becoming more inspired and emboldened to live an authentic and successful life starts right now. Now, when you live your life with a sense of purpose and then go on achieving your goals one after the other, there is that sense of peace and quiet confidence that starts welling up in you. You start feeling more assured, more confident, more emboldened, so to say. And what a feeling it is when that happens. It is such a good feeling to have, I can tell you that. Being able to envision a compelling future can be one of the most powerful, motivating and inspiring elements in developing an unshakable self-confidence. When you create a vision for your life that inspires and gives you direction and purpose, it will have a compelling effect on you at the present moment, in that it keeps you interested and engaged. You'll be thinking about that future most of the time and looking forward to it. It's like you can't wait to get it or get there. Know what I'm talking about? And that helps you maintain focus, manage setbacks, and move more determinately toward your goals. And not least, helps you to develop that unshakable self-confidence. Do you have a compelling future? If you do, well, congratulations. And I'm sure you can't wait to get there. If you don't, Well, create one. And the starting point is knowing exactly what you want and then imagining with feeling all the wonderful things that will be yours should you get that thing. Then getting to work to realize it. Achieving your goals in life gives an enormous boost to your self-confidence and general well-being. And here is what you can do to stay the course. First of all, you need to stay focused. If you want to be both efficient and effective in achieving your goals in life, understand that not everything should receive an equal measure of attention from you. You must be and always stay strategically focused. You must choose what to do and what not to do, 
and remained disciplined but flexible in pursuing your chosen objectives. Strategic focus requires you to identify the desired end state, consider all the impacts, positive and negative, that might affect the achievement of that end state and coming up with strategies, that is, the general plans for leveraging strengths and opportunities or overcoming weaknesses and threats to achieve results. The big question, however, is this. How can you do that consistently? And the answer is this. You must choose what matters most to you and give it all the time it demands and avoid overloading yourself with lots of things to do. In short, that means you should prioritize and stay focused, making sure that you discipline yourself to stick with a goal or task until you are done with it before moving on. Here's the thing. Success in part comes about by doing the right thing at the right time and doing it exceptionally well. And that means you need to pay attention and stay determined and focused. And to help you pay attention and stay focused on achieving lasting success, which eventually will enhance your self-confidence, here, for your attention and consideration, are four plans you will need to work with. The first one is a plan for earning and spending your money. The second one is a personal development plan. The third one is a weekly action plan for the things you will do and a to-do list for maximum productivity. The fourth one is a healthy living plan, that is, your diet and exercise plan. And in order to stay on track and avoid detours, you will also have to review how things are progressing on a weekly basis. So, let's look at these plans in a little bit more detail, shall we? And let's begin with the money planner. Now, <laughs> I hope you realize that earning or receiving money, however much, does not guarantee your success in life. What is crucial is the proper management of the money you earn. That is what will make a difference. When you know and understand the ins and outs of your money, it gives you a sense of control over your finances and your life. Money is like a lubricant that smoothens out many aspects of life. And it is good to have it handy whenever there is a need for it. Having money is essential in life. Most things in this world require money. That's not really news, you know it. Having money available is a good thing. Without it, life can be really tough. And that's a fact. I say so because I have experienced both sides. Uh, having money and not having it. And it's no brainer which one I prefer. And guess what? A person with money is more confident than one who is broke. That is just the reality. The money guy is able to do more and get more done than the broke guy. You know that, don't you? Now, what I have personally noticed is this. Many people work extremely hard. They get paid for their hard work. Then something tragic happens. They don't pay themselves. They pay lots of other people the landlord, the bank for the mortgage, the grocer, the creditor, the shoemaker, the cloth maker, the car dealer, etc. But somehow forget to pay themselves. 
You see, I used to do that too. But thankfully, I learned my lessons. And I don't do it anymore. I know who makes the money. And I make sure he is paid first. Let me ask you a very quick question. For all the time you've spent working or doing business in your life so far, what do you have to show for it? Imagine you had paid yourself something for all those years. Yeah, paid yourself something every month or every week, however you earn. And then invested those payments. That would be quite something now, wouldn't it? I think so. Anyway, it's never too late to start paying yourself. And as your savings and investments grow, so will your self-confidence. Believe me, I kid you not. You should engrave in your mind the following statement. A part of all I earn is mine to keep. Let me repeat. A part of all I earn is mine to keep. Remember that for yourself. You see, in the final analysis, it is not what you receive from your employer or client that matters, but what matters is what you keep. And more importantly, what you do with what you keep matters even more. So, this is what you should have on your money planner. Number one, a section that helps you see a summary of your financial position. That is, the total of how much you own and how much you owe. Secondly, a section on how much money you plan to earn weekly or monthly and how much to pay yourself. Thirdly, a section on how you plan to make sure that you continue earning money in the future. Number four, a section on how you intend to spend your money kind of budget if you know what I mean and finally number five a section to review your financial situation on a weekly or monthly basis I have a money planner that is part of my all-time success toolkit resource and I can give you a copy of it if you want just send me a message and uh, I'll be happy to email you a copy of that money planner. If you look after your money and you know for sure that you have a backup financially, your self-confidence will be strong and it will continue growing. Okay, next let's look at the personal development planner. You see, your life gets better when you get better. And since there is no limit on how much better you can become, there is also no limit on how much better your life can become. Just think about that for a moment. Since there is no limit on how much better you can become, there is also no limit on how much better your life can become. Wonderful. Your most significant success factor is you. When you change or improve yourself, your life changes too. You can improve the way you live your life enormously if you want to. And that goes a long way to enhance your self-confidence. By developing great virtues and new skills, for example, you can improve how much you are worth in the job market and start earning a lot. You could also develop new habits or behaviors that can go a long way to improve your productivity and relationships in many beautiful ways. Habits like, you know, going to bed early and waking up early, speaking less and listening more, um, affirming others, doing the right things, such things will enhance 
your well-being, your relationships, your productivity, and indirectly influence your self-confidence. Reading is also another way of improving yourself. It helps you expand your vocabulary as well as helping you to become a better writer and communicator. Reading is also good for mental stimulation. When you read, you are filling your head with all sorts of knowledge, insights, and wisdom of the ages. There is a lot more you can gain from being an avid reader. And all of these benefits have a way of coming in handy when you least expect it. At cocktail parties, during job interviews, when meeting your future in-laws, and so on and so forth. And in the process, your self-confidence is growing exponentially too. Another way you can develop yourself and improve your life is by listening to podcasts or shows of influential people and learn what makes them tick and perhaps incorporate some of their good habits into your own life too. And then there is the influence of new environments. You see, there are plenty of things one can gain from exploring different places. The list includes gaining new friends, new experiences, and new stories. When you start exploring new places, you get a better understanding of the people living there, including their culture, history, background, and much more. A new environment can influence your moods, your creativity, and general well-being. You can have all these things put together strategically in a personal development planner. And if you want something like that, I have such a planner in my all-time success planning toolkit. I can send a copy to you free of charge. Just get in touch. Next, we will look at the action planner. The action planner should be used to list the summary of the strategic important and priority things you intend to do during the week. Things that can be best done by other people must be delegated so as not to overburden yourself. And when it comes to meetings and appointments that you will, that you will be having during the week, choose to make or attend the ones that will help you move forward and attain your compelling future. The activities in the action plan should then be executed with the aid of a daily to-do list. A daily to-do list is a time-honored system that is beautiful in its simplicity. Here's how it works. You work out what needs to be done and in what order. Then write them down as tasks. Next, do them. And then, one by one, cross them out once done. Simple, isn't it? Well, yes and no. You see, almost everyone struggles with getting stuff done. It is a common thing. But a great many people struggle with the stage just before that, the stage of figuring out what it is they need to do. The to-do list is, in theory, the answer. A to-do list helps you to clear your mind and bring structure to your day. And when there is clarity and structure, it is easy to get things done. And I guess you can see how that goes to help uh, improve your self-confidence. You, in essence, have a plan of action for your day. When you tick off the items in your action list and the to-do list, you have proof of what you have achieved that day. And that enormously boosts your self-confidence. Clarity is the one essential for to-do lists. If your to-do list is not clear and to the point, your tasks probably 
won't get done, and they certainly won't be prioritized. And another important aspect of a to-do list is having brief details. For example, outline the first chapter of my novel from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. is much clearer and has more detail than write my novel. Having a to-do list also helps you to be accountable. The act of writing down what you want to do or accomplish in itself holds you accountable to get it done. Once you write it down, you have given it life, so to say, and it will keep calling your attention to it till you do it. You are, in a way, now accountable to yourself. My recommendation, however, is that you focus on doing three to five core things in a day. Anything more than that can easily lead to a pressurized schedule and have done or undone tasks and more likely a compromise on quality and that can then go and affect your self-confidence. If a lot of things need to be done, you should focus on doing those tasks which are urgent and important, your priority tasks, and then delegate the rest to other competent people. Getting things done during the course of your day builds your self-confidence and is motivating. The fifth planner is the healthy living planner, the diet and exercise plan. You see, we all need food to survive and it ought to be nutritious food that will help maintain our health. One of the things that can help you in your nutrition is meal planning. Meal planning helps you to be intentional about your nutrition and it can also help you with body weight goals, allergies or medical related issues that you are trying to manage with a proper diet. Meal planning can also help you keep to a budget. You see, when you shop sporadically during the week, it is highly likely that you will spend much more than if you had sat down and drawn up a meal plan and shopping list for that meal plan. Another good reason for doing meal planning is that it helps you ensure that you are getting enough servings of fruit, vegetables, and whole grains and that you eat a diverse group of food each week that includes enough fats, carbs, fiber, and protein to help ward off diseases. And you know, a healthy body, having a healthy body enhances your self-confidence big time. We do meal planning in, in, uh, uh, in my household and what I realized in my family is that planning a group of meals each week helped to provide for deferring needs in a much more efficient way. My wife and I, for example, have different food requirements from the teen children, <laughs> quite fuzzy eaters they are, and also our much younger children. We are a family of six. We have found it to be true that when you plan out your meals, you know exactly what you're eating each week, which can save a lot of time, energy, frustration, and money. You generally get to feel confident about what you're putting into your body. And that's good for your self-confidence. Now, let's talk about physical exercise. Whatever your age, there is a strong scientific evidence that being physically active can help you lead a healthier and happier life. People who exercise regularly have a lower risk of developing many long-term chronic conditions such as heart disease, type 2 diabetes, stroke, and some cancers. Research shows that physical activity can also boost self-esteem, mood, sleep quality, and energy, as well as reducing your risk of stress, depression, dementia, 
and Alzheimer's disease. These details I got them from the NHS website. So, I hope you will decide to have a healthy living planner for yourself or household. There is a blank copy of uh, this healthy living planner and shopping list that I can send you if you want to. Just let me know. We are coming to an end soon. Now, to make sure that you remain strategically focused and avoid taking detours while attempting to attain your compelling future, weekly reviews of how you're doing is a good thing to do. A weekly review should be used to think, evaluate, and reflect on what went well and what did not go well during the week and to lay the groundwork for the weeks ahead. You get the opportunity to examine what went wrong and what went right. And in doing so, you will inevitably see patterns emerge that would have otherwise gone unnoticed. And you can use them to your advantage in the future. So, instead of bouncing from week to week without a real idea of what you are accomplishing, a weekly review forces you to practice intentionality by taking time to pause and reflect as you consider the following. 1. What did I get done this week versus what I plan to do? 2. What unexpectedly arose this week that curtailed my productivity? 3. Why was I so efficient this week as compared to the last one, for example, or vice versa? 4. If I were to start this week all over again, what would I do differently? And five, what did I learn and what new ideas did I get this week to help me do better next time? In a nutshell, a weekly review is a chance to get aligned with your goals and ensure that the work you are doing daily is helping you to achieve those goals. It avoids you ever having to ask the question, what on earth was I doing all this time? A weekly review has the power to help you clarify your thinking and drive better decisions. This will help you to get more done in the long run and achieve overall success in your life and the projects you get involved in. Tracking your productivity through a weekly review will help you to better manage what you set out to do in your life and generally help you manage your life well. As they say, what gets measured gets done and shall I add, leads to success and builds your self-confidence and an unshakable one at that. There you have it. Developing an unshakable self-confidence is not complicated after all. You just need to be willing to do so. You have been very patient and I thank you for your patience. What I have talked to you in this discourse will be of no use to you if you don't put it into action. So I hope you will be kind to yourself and do something about what you've heard today and in the last episode on developing an unshakable self-confidence. Peace and love to you. I am Stalling Libs and you've been listening to Embolden, the podcast. I hope you found today's episode valuable. And if so, you can download and share it with your friends or anyone else who might benefit from it. And if you have any questions or comments about today's episode or any other episodes of this podcast, I would love to hear from you. Get in touch via my website 
at sterlinglips.com where you can also find more resources to help you succeed in life. And if you haven't yet, go to Apple Podcasts or wherever you find your podcasts and subscribe, rate and review this podcast. Join me next time right here for another emboldening conversation. Till then, be sure to take good care of yourself and thanks for listening.